Welcome to the final installment of the barn floor install build out. So I'm cleaning out all this mess that I made and chopping up the wood that's scrapped for the burn for the fireplace inside, separating out the pressure treated wood so that can go to the scrap dump. Fortunately, there's not a whole lot of cutoffs from the plywood and the pressure treated and organizing the tools a bit and you know moving the metal and stuff like that one lesson to reiterate which i noticed when i was cleaning up the plywood scraps is there was like one long strip and a couple cutouts and a couple trims but because i designed this floor and the barn was previously designed around um multiples of eight or four, there is very little waste. So definitely something to think about. We're in America, we gotta deal with four by eight feet. In Japan, it's 910 millimeters, because that's their grid. And when you design around the materials that exist, you can save money, you can save time, you can save insulation. But if you design something that's outside the norm, you may have a lot of wasted material. This last episode, we got a lot of little projects to do. We're going to, <clears throat> on this side, we're gonna put two lumber storage shelves. And what that's gonna be made of is three triangular brackets that sit on a ledge. Um, I think I'm gonna put one, they're gonna be to the left side of each of these posts. So there'll be three, and then there'll be another three. That will give a nice place to store some of the extra lumber for projects. We have some scraps that had been accumulating out there. It's easy too, because if you open the garage door, you just walk right in with your lumber onto the storage rack. Then we are going to do some electrical and plumbing. So up here, we're gonna put some nice warm color temperature LED lights so we can see what we're doing. We'll install a couple plugs and we'll rough out the plumbing for a slop sink that's going to go between that drain and that wall. So let me show you what's going on in the tack room, which sort of going to become the new utility room. This room was, yeah, there was a tack room. So we're going to, we're going to pull these saddle, uh, saddle holders down, open some space up here, get rid of a lot of this extra junk fix up this sweet lantern and replumb this with PEX to put a spigot outside uh, and the sink in there and kind of clean up some valves that have been corroded and get all that cleaned up and run the wire into this breaker. This room has a lot of potential. I think my buddy's gonna put a dust collector in here, which I think is fantastic you could actually put a big cyclone dust collector in here, vent the air outside, so you don't have to worry about your filter bags and all the dust will get collected in here. And the best part is that it'll be super quiet so you don't have that droning dust collector when you're working on your tools. All right, so lots of little things to finish up and this will be a functional shop. And I hope to bring, you know, lots of uh, interesting projects out of here while I'm in Colorado. So let's get to it. First step is a little bit of design work. So I'm making these 18 inches deep uh, with a little 45 degree bracket. And then I'm going to figure out whatever the, the up, upright piece is going to be after I get the 45s cut. The 45s are also going to be 18 inch long. So that way I can keep my saw set at the same distance and just crush through these. So now cutting all these pieces and now we got a whole stack of parts and pre-drilling all the holes so that we can quickly screw them together. And then we'll, uh, we'll glue them up and put some ledgers and start mounting them to the walls.
All right, got the lumber shelves installed. Uh, all right, so now let's load it up with wood. Just finished cleaning out this tack room to get ready for the plumbing. I'm gonna switch to PEX for these inlets to the house. I'm gonna drill a hole here to put a new silcock uh, outside spigot. And I'm going to <coughs> replumb this PEX and new valves and a manifold, clean up this whole plumbing situation and have two supply lines, hot and cold, for the sink that's gonna go in there. So the first step is gonna be to disconnect the water heater and move it out of the way temporarily, and then remove all the plumbing that's gonna come out. So uh, let's get to work. Okay, check out what we got here. This is a initial layout of our new plumbing system. Actually, I'm coming around to think PEX is kind of cool, even though it's plastic, because it's a lot more like electrical. The way this is, it's just like crimping wires, except you're crimping these little connections. So you like this is just like a bus bar when you think about it. Okay, so we got our water inlet coming here with a shutoff valve. Connect to this manifold. Out the top of the manifold is another valve to one of these wall mount threaded inserts. That's going to get a bushing and then an air hose inlet. So this will normally be off. And then in the winter, when we want to blow out the pipes to prevent any freezing upstairs or anything, we can connect an air hose and open up the spigot outside and blow all the water out. Off the manifold, there'll be a shut off for the hot water heater inlet feed, which will go to this. Uh, then there will be a feed for the outside spigot. This adapts to the spigot thread. Then we'll have cold water feed to the upstairs and cold water feed to the downstairs slop sink. And then same thing, coming out of the hot water heater, instead of getting another manifold, I just, I'm using a T. So one will go to the slop sink and one will go upstairs to the domestic water. Okay, let's uh, put this all together. Okay, here's the plumbing at this stage. We put everything together. You got the water coming into the valve. This feeds the slop sink. This with a cutoff feeds the hot water heater. This feeds the upstairs cold water. And this feeds this outside spigot. And then we have a shut off with an air inlet to blow it out for winter prep. Uh, this is a little this is a little disorganized now because I still gotta get some fittings to adapt those copper to PEX. So we finished up the utility room stuff. I sweat on some 90 degree elbows that also changed the pipe size from three quarter down a half inch and soldered in PEX adapters. Crimped on the upstairs hot water and upstairs cold. And then we got the hot water that's going to the sink. The hot and cold uh, feeds come out of here. And then the drain is here. So we have, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that green pipe closer to the bottom Use, reuse this rubber adapter to change it over to the three inch. We'll add this T and then we have another, well, we'll use pipe and a coupling to rejoin that. That'll bring this drain out over here. The sink will come with a trap kit. So somewhere in here we'll mount the shutoffs for the sink. 
I'm a little hesitant to do that before the sink arrives because I'm not sure what kind of clearance is, how long their hoses are. So experience has told me that if you wait until you have the most information, you're going to make a better decision as much as how, as much fun as it would be to install these shutoffs. Yeah, I think with uh, eight of those on, you're gonna have quite a bit of light. Look at this. We got some lights up in here. My buddy that I'm building this for installed these LED lights. And there's two more over there. They're all daisy chain. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna connect this leg to this. We'll have to make a custom wire for that. And then this end is gonna come through this beam into there. And then that lamp socket is gonna get replaced with a outlet. So we can put the lights on the existing switch for that. So that'll turn on all these LED lights. What a big difference all these LED lights make. So the electrical is nearly complete. We installed the LED lights. We installed, we ended up installing an extra outlet here where these shelves are gonna go. Outlets, 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 and then a GFCI. Because this is kind of outdoors and also there's gonna be a sink there. So you wanna make sure it's extra safe. And the last step in the electrical install, patching it into the panel. So we're lucky we have one extra, one slot for another breaker. This stuff is all over the place. So I am going to shut off this main breaker so I don't electrocute myself. And we'll install the new breaker here. The black goes to the breaker. The white and the ground go to the neutral bus bars. Okay, let's uh, take care of that. All right, panel's back together. We turned on the main breaker and we'll flip on the plug power. Green light means it's protected, no fires. So looks like this plug situation is set. The sink, which is gonna go right about here, wherever the trap and drain and hoses allow the sink to be. So I'm gonna kind of get that roughly in place and rough in these. We have some PEX to uh, wall mount adapters and some cutoff valves for the sink. So let's get that sink installed and that'll, have, that'll close up every tube and we can test the water and, and that actually will be the last task that finishes this little shop upgrade. Wanted to get in here before I put the sink in so you could see what's going on. We have the drain pipe plumbed in and it uh, there's a slight slant here. We have the hot and cold. The uh, This could be either way but I have the hot on the bottom so that it's on the left side and the cold on the top. Um, now I slide the sink in here and connect the hoses that attach to the shutoff valves and the crimp that attaches to the trap it's over here. And once that's all lined up, we'll tighten everything down. And 
I'll probably pop a couple screws in these legs so that the uh, sink doesn't rattle around. Oh, there it is. Massive freeze split. Yeah, there was just water blasting out of the ceiling. It's amazing nobody thought to cap these pipes or write a note on a piece of tape and attach it and say, these pipes are busted. Thank goodness it wasn't upstairs where it would have flooded the, uh, like the guest house. I don't know if there's any other splits. I'm tempted to just cap off the upstairs and leave that for another day. It looks like, I don't know what this is, snow melting. This might be a heater cable. So they maybe thought, to, yeah, just to put these up here and blow some expanded foam. And this is a shit show. Ugh. Okay, sink is installed. That took way longer than it should have. It was basically done at 10 o'clock in the morning and now it's three o'clock because, as I said earlier, some epic dingus just left the pipes with a hole in them, hidden up in the uh, thing. So let that be a lesson. Maybe try a low pressure air test before you put water. That's a lesson for me. And then a lesson for other people is write a note somewhere. Like these old pipes, maybe say like, these pipes are broken, do not turn them on. So I'm gonna take some duct tape and do that. Um, just so that nobody turns these valves on and floods the barn again. And when we fix the upstairs, maybe different project, we will be able to use these valves. So that finishes up the barn floor and plumbing. Now I'm just going to clean up this mess and move these benches back in and kind of get this shop in a usable state. Let's, let's finish it up. All right, we are done with the barn floor installation. Got a rough shop set up here. Gonna let my buddy do the bulk of the setup and organization because that's really the most fun part of setting up a new shop is getting your tools organized and your shelving and your drawers and your processing. So this is a huge improvement. We're not on a dirt floor. We got a little sink over there. We got a lot of light coming down. There's still a place for the tractor. I mean, there's quite a bit of work can come out of here. So thanks for watching this series. I hope uh, you learned some stuff. I certainly had a, learned a couple things. And uh, we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you found this content helpful, please consider supporting Never Stop Building. The easiest way to do that is just hit that red subscribe button and click the bell to get notified of new videos. If you really want to be my friend, join on Patreon so you can get plans and exclusive content, merchandise, and all that stuff. Uh, check in the description below the video for a link. Thanks for watching this and never stop building.